Good evening, folks. It is December 26, 2015. This is the first video in the Denoy Your Family Devotions page. And we're going to go and we're going to start off directly. We're going to go to Psalm 62. If you have your Bible handy, I'm going to be reading from the Modern English Version. And we are going to look at that. We're going to start at verse 6, or verse 5, excuse me, and follow down. And we are going to talk about it. We're going to just divulge on it a little bit. So let's go there. We are in Psalm 62, in verse 5. It says, My soul wait silently for God, for my hope is, in, is from Him. He only is my rock. He, he, he alone or only is my rock and salvation. He is my refuge. I will not be moved. In God is my salvation and my glory, the rock of my strength, and my shelter is in God. Now, it's very important to realize something. Is that when we have a relationship with God, we have access to the importance that, that God is with us. God work, walks with us. God is with us at all times. Now, the title of this particular devotional is, Are You a Squeezer or a Pleaser? Like, what is that all about? A squeezer or a pleaser? We're going to talk about uh, how you become, or how this becomes, where you can have in your heart and speak with your mouth that your soul waits on God, silently on God. Your soul hopes in Him and that He is your rock and your salvation. How do you come to that place? How do you get from from where you are now to, to that kind of understanding in God that He is your salvation, He is your rock, He is your he is your shelter. He is. You wait on him. You patiently wait on him. You silently wait on him. Where do you get? Where does that come from? Where does that? How, how do you get from point A to point B in that thing? We're going to talk about what it means to be a squeezer or a pleaser. Like, what does that mean? Well, let's talk about time spent with God, because to become a true person of God who has this kind of mentality we have to spend time with God we have to be we have to carve out time in our day for him not just for ourselves not just for uh, uh, our agenda which all that stuff is important time to yourself by yourself is important getting your things done and on your agenda is important but more important than that is time spent with God. And we need to understand that because no matter when you do it, it can shape your day. No matter when you do it. You can do it in the early morning. You can do it in the evening. Which means if you do it in the early morning, it means you'll probably be getting up with the with the birds. Okay? Or if you do it in the, the evening, you'll probably be staying up past you know your normal bedtime. But the time spent with God is very, very important. Because when we when we carve out time for God, now and I know I know our agendas can be very, very packed. You know, you get up in the morning, you ever you hey, you do your thing, you go to work do your thing at work, you come home, and you got to clean house, make supper, and all these things, okay, you have all these things in your agenda, where's God in it, where's God in it, if you, if you take time to carve out a part of your day, um, and it's got to be a routine thing too, because you have to have it as a routine, you can't just, when I have time today, I'll give, give God time, that, that's okay, once in a while um, but to really get a really good understanding of God and a really good um, relationship with God and, 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 a, and a steadily moving and, and freeing of the spirit 
those kinds of things. It has to be a regular basis, consistent kind of thing. Now, we are doing the devotional devos for boys with the uh, VeggieTales, Creators of VeggieTales. It's, it's published um, through, it's not Tommy Nelson. I originally said Tommy Nelson. It's not Tommy Nelson. It's another company. But we started out doing an Advent devotional every night before we go to bed. Or they go to bed. The boys go to bed. We did that. And then now they expect we do devotions before we go to bed. Okay? The understanding of that and, 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 and the science behind that, there's science in that, is that if you do something for a month, consistently, for a month, it becomes a habit. That's what these videos are for. These videos are so that you can do something consistently every day, every day, for longer than a month, for as long as I do these. It would be a year, two years, whatever. But it is to consistently get get you into a place where you're following the Word of God. You're, you're looking at God's Word. You're, you're learning about it. You're studying it. And you're, you're learning of God. That's what this is for. And it's getting you into a place where when there would come a day, possibly, that these videos are no longer produced, you would still have the habit of getting in God's Word every single day. Because doing that gives you the ability to say to come to the place where where David said my soul waits silently for God think about that my soul waits silently for God basically he's waiting patiently for God to speak to him and guide him and direct him remember we talked last month about the wonderful counselor this is what it's talking about He's waiting for God to speak to him. He's silently waiting. Okay, my hope is in him. Justin asked me tonight, what does it mean? What does hope mean? Hope means to me, and I explained to him this way. Hope is the ability to know that tomorrow will be better. Hope is, is the ability to have joy in the midst of the trial because you know that God has the situation at hand. Hope is in that same trial knowing that each day is going to get better and that makes you feel better. That's hope to me. That's how I define hope. And that's how I defined hope to Justin. Because he said, what does it mean to have hope? My hope waits on him. He only now say he so here's something that we that we uh, as Americans in 2015 2016 we get confused here because it says he says he only is my rock and my salvation he is my refuge I will not be moved now let's look at this how often how often in the last I'm asking this to you. How often in the last, say, two weeks, have you been been in a situation and you've relied solely upon your own thinking, your own your own emotions, your own uh, your own um, wants or your own desires? How many times have you done that in the last, say, two weeks? You've been in a, maybe in any in any situation. And you've and you've relied on yourself, okay, rather than on God. That's what this is for. That's what this is talking about. He is my refuge. He is my only. He only is my rock and my salvation. He only. Nothing else is going to make it better. Nothing else is going to make my life better. Nothing else is going to help me to be a better person than the knowledge of God. And that's what I'm saying to you tonight. Nothing is going to make you a better person. Nothing is going to make you uh, feel better about yourself in a more uh, um, enveloping way or encompassing way than knowledge of God and that in that relationship 
we might do our we might do our workouts we might do our we might eat healthy we might um, take care of ourselves physically physically you feel good but physically feeling good is different than feeling good emotionally feeling good spiritually that can play a part in it it can help you to feel better physically can help feel feeling better physically it can help you feel better emotionally but it's not a full encompassing feeling feeling good about yourself it's not a full encompassing uh, changing of your heart and how you feel about yourself only God can do that only God can do that okay now he says that uh, he is my refuge how many times have we uh, what is a refuge well, you know we, we, have, we have to do, we have to kind of look about the, look at the word refuge what what does that mean a refuge well a refuge we all know refuge is um, a place where we go and hide away to be uh, to regroup to to uh, reflect and those kinds of things if we reflect and, re and take refuge in God he then can lovingly direct us in the next path in the next move in the next thing lead us and guide us okay if we reflect and take refuge in our own thinking in our own understanding those kinds of things then can lead us in a wrong direction because we're not going by we don't live by feelings we don't live by circumstantial feelings Christians live by faith in God and having all of this feeling in your heart feeling in your life starts with number one accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior and doing that is, is admitting that you're a sinner and <clears throat> you might say well what do you mean I've not done anything wrong I talked to this talked about this a couple times already it's the sin that was brought about in the Garden of Eden that's been passed down from generation to generation to generation to 2015 that sin that's the sin nature that helps people or tells people or guides people into doing things that are not godly now you might say well I don't murder rape or steal okay <clears throat> but that sin is still there that sin still guides you in direction maybe in a maybe not in such a overt way you may you know in such a blatant way but it's still there and you have to repent of it see and then you can then begin a relationship with God and then going through this relationship of setting up a, a daily time when you can spend time with him and then your whole soul becomes like David said here like David said you silently wait on God he's your only refuge and strength and your shelters in him we like to think about shelter um, where we go and we <clears throat> try to like a refuge we try to um, hide away in our own emotional scent, sense our own um, way of thinking our understanding God, there's a scripture in here that says in the book of Psalms that says trust in the Lord and lean not on your own understanding trust in him and lean not on your own understanding our understanding can be skewed at times that's why it's important to have this relationship so I want to urge you today have a relationship with God have a relationship with him and start by saying God forgive me and be my Lord and Savior and then start a daily routine of reading his word uh, going through these with me is a great start um, but find your own pattern there's Bible reading plans there's all kinds of things you can do you can you can look at you can go through the Old Testament through to the New Testament beginning to end you can do New Testament first you can do all kinds of different ways just Google it 
and you'll see there's a lot of different ways so that's my 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 uh, challenge for you today <clears throat> start tonight start getting into God's Word daily on your own ask God to forgive you and be your Lord and Savior if you haven't done that already and if you are if you have and you struggle with the um, having time with God then let this be your springboard okay let this be your springboard because God will do miracles and work ways work things in you that you'll never you, you don't ever uh, will, will never be able to walk away from so God is a great God God bless you tonight God give you a, a, a peace tonight as you sleep just be with him and, and allow him to do your do work in you and until next week or till tomorrow <laughs> so you should do it a weekly broadcast till tomorrow this is Pastor Josh God bless <laughs>